Thousands of people turn to the internet for help because they have a burning computer and network problem that they cannot solve. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the Packet A Team. Hey there, Carrie with Packabomb.com. So I had uh, Brandon on my email list. You know, we're chatting about packets as we do. And he mentions he's got this site where users are having trouble loading web pages. It's extremely slow. You type in this, the URL, it takes forever to load. It sounds like it could be, you know, DNS or something maybe, but you do a dig or an lookup, it's fine. So I said, send me a packet capture. Let me look at it. So he did. I looked at it that night, sent him my feedback. The next day he email, emails me, problem solved. So sometimes, you know, I kind of troll around sites where people are having problems and try to help them out, but they disappear on you a lot of times. You know, there's all the stack exchange sites and whatnot and Reddit too sometimes. So I'm more likely to put in some effort with someone on my email list because I figure they actually probably care. Anyway, so let's let's jump in. Um, so he sent me this capture, and all I know is websites are really slow. It's not a great place to start with data. You really want to have it a little more well-defined, uh, a very specific uh, use case. So, but you know what? I'll, I'll give it a shot. So what I want to know really is what am I dealing with? There's what, um, 63,000 packets. If I go to say conversations and I look at TCP, there's over 2000. Let's sort these by port. Um, oh boy. There's a lot of port 80, a lot. Where do I start? Uh, let's look at, let's see, HTTP and let's look at, I don't know, Packet counter. Is that what I want to look at? I don't know. Create stat. We've got oh, we've got over two thousand requests and over two thousand responses. I. So where do you start? I mean, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in here potentially. So I poked around a little bit. I saw maybe some stuff. I don't know. I said, look, you know, what sites did you go to? And he said. Uh, I, I loaded Nix.com, I guess like, you know, basketball, Nix. So, all right, let's start with that. So if I want to try to find a request for Nix.com, I'm going to search for HTTP.host contains Nix. Okay, that's probably it. We can look at HTTP and it's host Nix.com. Nix.com get. Great. There it is. So let's do a follow TCP stream. Okay. Looks like it's a 302 move temporarily to nba.com slash Nix. Okay. Um, but you know what? Look, if you saw in the previous videos, you know, I added this delta column that shows you the delay between packets as they are displayed. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of packets in here, but I filtered on just this stream. So this delta column is showing me the packets bet between these two packets. So this is 11 and a half seconds to get back. So we, we have the three-way handshake. We have a get request. This all happened instantly. The Now here's something I just noticed and I did not notice the first time. You see this ACK? Actually, you see the Synac? It came back instantly. That should tell you that whatever responded with a Synac is local. I mean, it did it in a hundred and what is this microseconds? 187 microseconds. And I'm sure Nix.com is wherever Nix.com is across the internet. I didn't notice that the first time. Look at that. So that raises my, makes me raise my eyebrows. Um, but we noticed that the actual response, this is the first one back from the server, destiny, uh, source port 80, took 11 and a half seconds. That's an eternity. 
Now you'll notice that this first one back from the server says TCP segment of reassembled PDU, and then the second one is the move temporarily. Um, so what's happening here is you can see here two reassembled TCP segments. It means the actual application data, the TCP payload was split across two segments, two packets, and Wireshark is just putting them together for me. Now, usually when I'm troubleshooting HTTP, I want to turn a particular feature off because this HTTP 1.0302 moved, it's not in the second packet. It's in the first packet. And I want to see it there. So I'm going to right click on TCP, go to protocol preferences, and I'm going to disable allow subdesectors to reassemble TCP streams. Now that packet is the first, it shows up as the first one. Okay, so that's, is this the problem? It might be. 11 and a half seconds to get a response that's just a 302? That is questionable to me. The second issue is, why is a 302 split across two packets? I mean, it's very little data. That seems strange. So let's go find, um, let's go back, host contains NBA. So if we can find the, here we go, git slash nick. So here's after we did the, the reader, you know, after we got 302. Let's do follow TCP stream. And okay, we got a, a, a 200 in this one. So there's the get, the ack. Now look at this crap, 14, over 14 seconds to get the first packet back from the server. So that's, um, we got a huge delay for the uh, 302 and now a huge delay for the, f the f for the for this first packet. That's, that's horrible, something's going on. And I don't even know if it was the same, I didn't look, the same destination IP. I mean, because it could be maybe there's something going on with that particular server. Um, but this is definitely a problem. And, you know, I'm looking at this again, and we're, we're seeing this weird, this HTTP 200 okay. Um, it has 17 bytes in this packet. That is, if we click on the, I mean, that's just, Look, that's just this string. So it's just the response code is in its own TCP segment and then the rest of the page. That's weird. I would not say that's normal to have just the response code in its own segment. So now what, let me, uh, so this, column you know is delta actually so let's look at so now i'm curious about this this is the second time we've seen this the response split up with the very first one having just a little bit of data so let's look at all the responses http response okay and look these are all 17 bytes they're just including the response code same thing for this 25 bytes, I bet it's eight bytes more than this one. I mean, eight, eight characters more. Um, so what about the delay for these? If you look at this, this column is showing me the, the time between each of these packets, which I don't care about. They're all different TCP connections. TC, they're their own TCP streams. This isn't that useful to me to know if this was delayed really bad like it has in the first two we've seen. So what we want to do is right click on TCP, protocol preferences, and we want to calculate conversation timestamps. So what that does is it adds something to the TCP header. We can expand it. Here's timestamps. And this is essentially the delta, but it's just for the relative to a single stream. So I'm going to do time since previous frame in this TCP stream, right click, apply as column. So now, and let's sort. No, let's resize this or edit. Let's just call it TCP Delta. 
Um, okay, so now let's sort it. Oh, goodness gracious. Look at all these. 18, 17, 14, 13, all these seconds. This is how long it took for this response to come back. That's really bad. I mean, that's, look at this. All these double digit responses. Holy crap. Terrible. I would say this is, and these are across all kinds of different um, source IPs. Source IPs over here. And there are all kinds of different source IPs. So it's not like one server that's slow. There's something going on. So, and again, all these are truncated responses with just the response code in the first packet. So, you know, at this point, um, I'm thinking there's some kind of proxy or HTTP filter some kind of security device at the local site because that's that's just not normal and maybe it's having some problem and so it's introducing these delays now as I already mentioned let's look at one of these uh, follow TCP stream and let's resort by packet order now as I mentioned I didn't actually see this the first time and if I had, it would have nailed it for me. But the local response time is extremely fast. So there is something, there's a local proxy of some sort. So, I mean, the Senac comes back in, you know, less than a, a, a millisecond. And then we have the big delay, and then we have just the header in its own packet. So those two things tell me there's something definitely going on. So now I want to try to figure out um, anything else I can about this device. So if I look, so I want to, I'm thinking maybe I'll get lucky and this thing is layer two adjacent. So if I look at traffic that the client's sending, it's sending it from a Dell, so this must be a Dell machine, to a Cisco uh, MAC address, so probably its default gateway. If I look at the Synac, the source address is not coming from a Cisco, it's from a, coming from a Cameocom MAC address. I don't know what that is, never heard of it, but there's some kind of asymmetric traffic flow, which in and of itself is fine, but that's a tip, that's a clue. So I wanna look at this, I'm gonna copy the value, and I'm gonna go, let's go look it up. Cameo Communications Incorporated. Okay. Cameo Networking Built to Order. Okay, so clearly you know, it's some kind of networking company. Yeah, I don't know if this is one of their products or it just has their, um, you know, one of their NICs in it or whatever. Um, so I'm going to go back and look at the other responses. There was one that caught my eye earlier. It was the 400. Bad request. I mean, you know, 200, okay, that's cool. 302s um, moved, that's fine. 404s, sure. But a 400? You know, what's that about? So let's check one of those out. Follow TCP stream. And look at this. In the title is Sim Filter. I don't know what that is, but that's a flag to me. That sounds like some kind of filter, some kind of HTTP device. Let's copy that. Let's go Google it. Sim filter. Battle of the bits. None of that looks particularly interesting, to be honest. Um, what about Dan's Guardian? That also looks promising. <laughs> True web content filtering for all. Last updated in 2012. So at this point, I give the feedback to Brandon saying, look, you've got, um, you've got your res HTTP responses coming back in a packet by themselves. That's weird. 
you've got these long delays, you've got some this traffic being sourced from a Cameo Com MAC address, and there appears to be a Dan's Guardian software in the mix here. So he took the MAC address, found the IP address, found a filtering device that was forgotten about in a closet somewhere, and recently at that site they had um, I think upgraded or replaced a, a, a server that was also the local DNS server. And everyone forgot about this web proxy, so it was pointing at the old decommissioned server for its DNS server. So its, its DNS was actually timing out. And once they updated the DNS server on it, everything was fine. So packet team back again check the capture let's begin whoop there it is yeah so that was cool um problem solved guys you, could you have figured this out another way yeah probably but if this was like 15 minutes of looking at a capture i don't have to like go point fingers and blame the network guys or blame someone else um that was it so this is what i'm calling the the packet the the packet a team if you want to be on the packet a team join the email list we can talk about packets um, maybe if you have some time that you solved a problem with packet analysis i'd love to feature it on the website or if you want to work on a problem together and look at some stuff let's do that i'm all about it so until next time bum 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 bum